Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Fani de Toy. I'm from the National Council of and for Persons with Disabilities in South Africa. Welcome to our presentation. The topic for today is the impact of hearing loss on older persons, their family, friends and caregivers. I lost my hearing in the army in 1977 due to acoustic trauma and progressively lost the rest over a period of 10 years. I was completely deaf for 25 years until 11 years ago when I received two cochlear implants. I or persons like me who acquired deafness or hearing loss later in life communicate through speech, lip reading, reading and writing, gestures, subtitles, captions or a combination of these, not sign language. The first part of my presentation, what is the prevalence of hearing loss? According to the World Health Organization, 15% of the world's adult population have some degree of hearing loss. About one third of those who are affected have disabling hearing loss. Persons affected by hearing loss per age group are as follows. 6% between the ages 35 and 44. 14% of those 45 to 64. One out of three people over the age of 65 and two out of three people over 75. Research showed that persons with hearing loss wait an average of seven years before seeking help. However, it's worrying that 40% of people with moderate to severe hearing loss know they have a hearing loss, but don't know how to take the next step. Those involved must therefore familiarize themselves with, for example, how the process of hearing works, as well as the impact of hearing loss on the person, his or her family, friends and caregivers. Important to know that the ears are the doorway to the brain. Your brain is responsible for making sense of everything you hear. As explained, 40% of people with disabling hearing loss know they have a hearing loss, but don't know how to take the next step. The first step to take. See a registered health professional, for example an audiologist, for a full diagnostic evaluation. He or she will provide the following. An audiogram with a degree of loss and a functional report. This is an audiogram, and this is the indication of hearing loss. The functional report will explain the clinical description, the degree of hearing loss, the functional impact, as well as possible accommodations and support that are necessary. The degrees of loss are measured in decibels and are as follows. Normal loss between 10 and 15 decibels, slight hearing loss 16 to 25, mild 26 to 40, moderate 41 to 55, moderately severe 56 to 70, severe 71 to 90 and profound total loss more than 90 decibel. Step 2. Role players must understand the impact of hearing loss, the real impact of hearing loss. You can see the impact of normal hearing on the brain on the left hand side. Hearing loss, the impact on the brain on the right hand side. For example, according to the South African Association of Audiologists, SAAA, hearing loss can cause cognitive decline. Treating hearing loss could lower the risk of Alzheimer's disease. People with mild hearing loss are three times more likely to have a history of falling than people with normal hearing. Did you know that up to 30% of adults with diabetes will experience hearing loss? Step 3. 
understand communication processes. If you compare visual loss with hearing loss, you see the total fading away in visual loss. With hearing loss, you may miss certain pitches and sounds and not the total fading away. As you can see, certain pitches, certain sounds you can miss. You may think that a mild hearing loss can be ignored. A mild loss doesn't just mean sounds aren't loud enough. It means sounds aren't clear enough either. If you have a mild hearing loss, speech consonants like the th and a th or a p and a k may be lost during a conversation. That means if you may be difficult for you to clearly distinguish between certain words, for example, the word death may sound like death. Poor acoustics, lighting, background noise that is distracting can also pose additional challenges. Your mild hearing loss is probably affecting you more than you are prepared to admit. Early identification of mild hearing loss gives one the best chance for success with oral rehabilitation and inclusion. The effects of mild hearing loss can mean you are straining to hear whether you notice it or not. Over the course of the day, this may lead to mental fatigue and increased anxiety. Step four, understand the communication barriers. I can't hear you if you mumble. Speak one at a time, please. Face me, please. I can't hear if you cover your mouth. Be heard. Avoid chewing gum or food and keep your mouth visible while speaking. Backlighting causes a shadow on the face that makes lip reading very difficult. But what is the way forward? Taking the first step. Breaking the silence barrier by means of disclosure. Remember, professional and peer support are available. Together, we are strong. There are various suppliers in the field of assistive listening and living devices. I want to share with you a case study. A letter from a child regarding a mother who is in a frail care centre in the Eastern Cape. Although this letter was written during COVID-19 hard lockdown, many of the challenges are still relevant. Dear Fani, COVID-19 has brought with it many changes and I've noted that many people have endured many hardships, in particular our elderly, as they were not allowed to visit us in isolated for many, many months. My mother is in frail care and not being able to visit her was extremely difficult for all of us, as we are living in Cape Town. Over Christmas season, they were allowed visitors and noted the following. The area where the visitors were allowed was a large dining area with a few chairs and tables and the sound was terrible. Everyone shouting louder than the other person. The floors are filled and tiled and there are blinds in the windows and no curtains. Over the New Year period, when again no visitors were allowed, they took the residents outside to speak to the family at a fence. This was a disaster for many hearing impaired as the wind was blowing most of the time and they were in a completely open area. As you as hearing aid users can imagine the noise of the wind coming through the aid and trying to hear someone on the other side of the fence. I do realize that these are desperate times and not everyone consider there are so many elderly with hearing aids or with hearing loss. My mom was not hearing me, so I took out a hearing aid to see if they were working. They were so full of wax and the wax had gone up the tube, so I had to take it to the audiologist for a new tube. 
she's in she's frail and has onset of dementia so is not able to do it anymore herself i know the sisters change the batteries if needed but it's important that they train one or two of the staff to help with the care of the hearing aids as this may also prevent stress on the elderly if they are not hearing. I also noted that many of the retirement centers and homes have a DSTV package, but many are not aware of the subtitle facility for some of the programs like Mnet and Sky News. I think that this is something that they should all be aware of taking into account the statistics of persons over the age of 65 that have a hearing loss. Matters arising from this letter from this daughter. The reasonable accommodation of persons with hearing disability, the impact of background noise and lighting, areas where people meet, access to television, the role of family members and friends, and then hearing instrument care and cleaning. The next part of my presentation I'll be focusing on hearing instrument care and cleaning. Part two, hearing instrument care and cleaning. Taking care of your hearing aids. Excessive heat or cold will damage the hearing aid. Never leave it near a stove or a sunny window. The hearing aid should not be worn with when using a hair dryer. Never apply hairspray when the aid is on. In extremely cold, wet or rainy weather, be careful to keep the aid protected. Never wear a hearing aid while taking a bath, showering or swimming. To prolong the life of a hearing aid, store it overnight in a tightly closed container with silico gel capsule to absorb moisture. Hearing aid wearers should always carry a spare, fresh battery. Battery contacts may be tried with a dry cotton swab in cases of humid weather or heavy perspiration. Dogs and cats may chew on the hearing aids, safely store away from animals when not in use. Never attempt to open up a hearing aid. It would void the warranty. The maintenance check on, for example, behind the ear hearing aids. Wipe it off, it off with a dry cloth or kitchen towel. Test the battery. Listen for whistling sound when you enclose the aid with your hand. Check the ear mold opening for wax. Every night, store the aid in a dry, cool place. Turn the aid off by opening the battery compartment completely. Store instrument in a container with dry aid capsule and make sure the lid of the container is properly closed. What is an ear mold? It's a custom made device that is connected with a behind the ear hearing instrument which is placed into the ear canal, transporting the sound produced by the hearing aid towards the eardrum. Caring of your ear molds. Replacing the 2 mm ear mold tubing by the audiologist may be to be done 3 to 6 monthly when the tube is hard and impossible to remove from the hearing aid itself. Cleaning of an ear mold, the daily care. The ear mold should be wiped off with a tissue or dry cloth each time it is removed from the ear. The ear mold opening should be checked for wax. If wax is present, gently remove it using a pipe cleaner or wax tool. A vent cleaner or pipe cleaner may be used to clean the ventilation canal. Weekly or as needed care, the ear mold should be washed occasionally. Remove the ear mold from the hearing aid and use lukewarm water and a drop of dishwashing liquid to wash the ear mold. 
carefully dry the ear mold with kitchen towel paper and use a forced air mold blower to remove the moisture from the tubing and ventilation canal. Allow the ear mold and tubing to dry overnight. The most important thing is keep calm and ask your audiologist, a registered health professional, for support. This information was made available with the compliments of Tanya Beaton and Renee Vasson, audiologists. In conclusion, never put anything smaller than your elbow into your ear. General sensitization training for all staff and family members, as well as older persons with hearing loss, regarding the real impact of hearing loss is recommended. Remember, together we are strong. My contact particulars, Fani Dutwe, fani.dt at mweb.co.za or fani.dt at ncpd.org. That's it, eh? My Facebook particular is Fani dot the toy one six seven at Facebook dot com and my Twitter handle at Fani Dreams. Thank you for listening to me.